Alrighty, in today's video, you'll learn how to add up entries by month, year, and beyond with the Notion formula property using date and number properties. I'll be building on a previous video where I showed you how to add up entries by current month and how we can manipulate other parts of date properties with different formula functions and number properties. First, we're just going to recreate the previous video through a quick summary. In our previous video, we used the map function to reference entries as the relation filtered by the month in which the date fell under. We made sure that the month of now was equal to the month of the database entries that we were referencing. And we wanted to show that by the number based on those entries, right? So if we had the current month is March. So if we change this to March, it'll be one and 24 as an array. In our case, we wanted to add up the total. So we added sub. So we have one number that summarizes and adds up entries by the current month. We did that by referencing the now formula function. And as you can imagine, there are many different formula functions that we can use to manipulate dates, right? We use the now function. We can go to the minute and hour. And in our video, we're going to be focusing on month and year. And then I'll also look into date and perhaps day so that we can sort of expand on the previous video of just simply adding up entries by the current month. We did this with the month and now, and let's build on it real quick by creating a month property that functions as our specification to the month that we want to see. Because month is a number property, we don't need to use that month formula function. We don't need that parentheses. So now if we specify March as three, we get what the previous formula function where we reference the current month works the same way. But now what we can do is specify the month directly in case we want to quickly understand a certain month in which we're referencing the date of. I think a combination to what we just created to what we had in our previous video is by again using the if function to say otherwise. And we can slowly build that in by adding a few new lines to separate out a if formula where, where if the month property is empty, we can set it as a different outcome that we can reference depending on whether it's filled or not. So I'm going to add a line break after this comma so that we don't have to include the end of our formula output. And we just need to create a conditional statement that says if the month property is empty, we'll just use again, month current date equals month formula function of now. And if not, we will just have month of current date equal month. So we just need to add that extra parentheses there to fix that entire thing. See what happens because we've now referencing two different outcomes where if it is empty, we'll just reference the current and if not, we'll reference the month property that we created. So if I delete this, this number shall not change at all. And that's because the current month is March. So if we change this to April, obviously that changes. And if we do three, that doesn't change at all, right? Building on that conditional if statement, let's say you're tracking over a period of years that goes just beyond the month. And so you're going to want to filter by both month and year. We're going to create another number property and title it year. We're going to do something very similar to this formula property. And we're going to build on what we created with the month if function. All right. So now that we've set up our conditional statement with month and current month, we can go further with year. And by using that number property we created to specify that. I think the easiest way to go about it in this case is to copy and paste part of the formula that we created and add another filter in which we can embed this if statement, but for the year property and for the year function. We don't need this comma because it's a double filter and we just need to rename these variables. It can't find those variables date, do that. And that's purely so that we can work with a formula with no errors and so that 
we can focus on the errors we're creating as opposed to the errors that already exist within the current formula. So now we have to go ahead and change these properties. So instead of month, we're specifying year. And instead of the month function, we're going to be using the year function, three different places. And now we have to change this formula for property of year. And everything is almost identical. And now let's see if this works. So what I'm going to do is duplicate it and make this March of 2022. If we do by month, currently it is zero. And the reason for that is because we are now referencing the current year. And if you look at both of these entries, it is 2023 and 2022, right? So this is actually what we want to see. If we do this, nothing changes because now we've created this conditional statement where if year is empty, we're just going to take the current year, which is 2024, in which there are no entries in that situation. So now we can manually specify 2022. And notice how 24 pumps up. Let me change that to 21. And then because we've specified year and month, we can pinpoint that exact date range that we want to see based on the month and year. Now if we change this to 2023, it's 24 now because of this entry. If we remove month, we still get that entry because of that month formula that we started. Now if we do this to 11, we see those two entries add up like so. And so if I remove both year and month, it says zero because it's looking for March 2024 dates. So if we duplicate this and make this 2024, it will work like so. That was an easy way to duplicate a property and go a little further to create a responsive way in which you add up entries as well. Now, I showed this formula syntax summary for a reason, and I think immediately the two formula functions that I think might be immediately useful for the majority of Notion users would be the day, which specifies the day of the week between 1 and 7, and the date, returns a day of the month from the date. And that could be very helpful if you have a repeating entry that happens at the first of every month, the 15th of every month, or the 16th of every month. And so if you were being paid at a certain period every month consistently for a year, you could specify just the date and you could summarize just those entries consistent to that date, regardless of month, to add up and summarize into a formula like so. I think what I'm gonna do next is create a date month number property to see if we can weave it in to this further. So let's control C, control V, shift enter, shift enter, dot filter, redefine those variables like so to reduce all those errors. And then instead of creating an if the date of the month is empty, it will just be nothing. And if it isn't, we'll take the current date equal to the date of the month. Now let's see if this works based on some of these entries we have. So I'm going to change this to November 3rd. I'm going to specify 3. Actually, I think this isn't going to work because we have these other filters. And so a quick trick that we can do to test this on its own is by adding a slash, asterisk, and then going to the very end of that formula and doing asterisk slash to turn the rest of the formula into a comment so that we're only using this formula that we set up currently. I think that's a very helpful way to test parts of a formula before you add it. And also it sort of is a way to store formulas if you want to reuse it in the future. So look what we just did, right? It used to be zero and now it's 49. And that is because if you look at November 3rd and March 3rd, it's 24 and 25, which is equal to 49. For example, if you have a database with all your finances where you're tracking entries, that you always have an entry on the certain day of the month, this could be a very easy way to specify that date of the month and sort it by just those entries itself. If I do one, for example, it's going to be two, which is November 1st. And this is created so that it's irrespective of month and year. And otherwise it won't work because it's always going to set the month and the year to the current 
month and year, which our case is 2024, March 3rd. And so this will only apply for one month and only for the current month and current year that you're in. If you wanted to just isolate this formula for just the date of the month, this is another way to do it and another way to think about it as well. Last formula function that I'll mention is this week. You can do the exact same thing here, similar to date of month, where you just duplicate this formula. Maybe you remove a comment. I think in this case, because it's only conditional to when it's not empty, we can leave this in. It only stacks when you combine two number properties together. And so lastly, I'll just do that. Remove that comma, copy this, paste it, add comma, right? Redefine the day because it's not technically defined. Remove that red text. And in this case, we're going to be using the week function to return the week of the year of the date. If you are tracking your years by week and you want to know the exact entries by a certain week, we're just creating that number property, changing the variable out, changing the formula function out, and let's change this to January 1 of 2024. And so in this case, let's go ahead and add that other comment like we did in our previous example. Specify one and bam, two, beautiful, it works. I just created three different formulas that you could interchangeably weave in, adding these comments and hiding it so that we can test these formulas independently and then eventually add them together if you'd like. But in our case, it might not make sense to have some of these combinationally together to get what we're looking for. So anyways, again, I highly recommend duplicating a formula and then recreating it so that you have maybe four different formulas to show all of these. We just have to delete, remove, modify, and customize it to our exact needs. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Again, we are showing it by the sum of a current number. We don't have to do the sum formula and we can show any property that we'd like around that database entry. And so rather than the number, we can show just the entry itself. The thing is, it's not a functional clickable entry like we've had. And so that is where it might make sense to think about how you want to show it and how you might want to manipulate it. If we use length, for example, regardless of what we show with the current formula function, it'll just count how many of those entries fall in the specified set of number properties that you've entered. Hope this made sense and hope that you're able to use this in your own Notion workspace. And I'll see you in the next one. Like and subscribe. I appreciate all the support.